everybody, welcome back to my shop. It's a total mess. Uh, this week I'm working on a lot of projects. You remember when I had to build a few months ago a really big wall unit for picture frames for old commanding officers in my precinct? Well, my captain wanted me to build an even bigger one, so that's taken up a lot of my shop, a lot of my time, and, and just making a mess all over. And I need to, you know, get things done in between. While I'm doing that, uh, I was making some, working some cutting boards here, making those for Christmas. And those are done, but they need to be sanded, they need to be oiled and finished completely, chamfered edges. But uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit of the milling process that I do and the layout, uh, how I make these cutting boards. Now you've seen, I've done a video in the past, uh, maple and cherry cutting board, that's on my channel. I, I did that, I think, uh, maybe at the beginning of this year or the you know sometime around the, uh, the mid-season in the winter. But what I didn't do was really explain you know, the, the way I lay it out and how I select the wood and how, you know, I use the jointer and the milling process, you know, a, as much as I would have liked to, because before that, the videos that I was doing, I was doing a lot of milling the rough lumber, but I've come up with some easier ways over the years and uh, shortcuts and, and things that, that make the process go a little quicker and things that little tips and tricks and things that you might not have uh, known yourself. Uh, also, uh, I want to talk about, you know, removing checking from the wood and uh, using hand planes and stuff like that, because a, a big part of what I do when I make these cutting boards and butcher blocks and whatnot and to get them dead flat is after the, the glue up process, after they are already, you know, surfaced on, on four sides, they still need to sit and acclimate to the temperature because they're going to move again. So you need to sticker them, which is putting them like this with boards in between them and not having them touch. Otherwise, they're going to suck up each other's moisture. But uh, getting the wood below 10%, 11% is, is a good start. Uh, mm -hmm. Working with some, you know, some nice dry lumber. And then when you mill it up, and you sticker it and you let it dry even more and then it becomes very stable, then you can, after 24 hours, do the final milling, which is what I like to do. So uh, keeping these boards as thick as I can, these are still a little bit over one inch. They're about an inch and an eighth, inch and a sixteenth. And uh, I pass them through the planer or hand plane them. You'll see that in the video. What I like to do is after I hit the jointer, then um, I hit the table saw, you know, I, I rough them out on the miter saw first, get them smaller so it's easier to pass them on those tools. And working with smaller boards is, is much easier on the jointer, that's, you know, for sure. Uh, you gotta leave them a little bit longer for the planer so that you can cut off snipe if you do get any uh, at all. And then what you wanna do is after everything is jointed perfect and glued up and laid out in the direction you want it and, you know, the grain selection and the width and all, all the pieces are set up good, you want to get that after 24 hours, the glue set complete. You want to get it in the vise and you want to make it dead flat on one side with a hand plane because you're not going to be able to pass this through the jointer anymore. It's way too wide. I have an eight inch jointer. This is a, a 13 inch wide cutting board. So, you know, I don't want to pass it through and then have to put it on a sled with a, you know, an eighth inch or a, or a quarter inch piece of um, plywood or, or hardboard and then have to pass it through the planer on a, on a sled to make it flat. So I like to just put in the vise, good old fashioned hand plane, get that flat on one side, then you can go back over to the, the thickness planer, run it through and make it co-plane on both sides and you'll have it dead flat. All right, so let's get started uh, on the milling process here with the video and I'll see you when I'm done. All right guys, I'm gonna start this process by roughing out the rough lumber and cutting it to more manageable size. But at the same time, after I make the cut, I wanna check the ends and make sure that there's no splitting or cracking. That's called checking. If there's any of that on the ends of the board, on the end grain, you wanna cut a little deeper until you see there are none of those voids at the end of the piece. Next part of the process is to bring the pieces over to the jointer and flatten one face. Every time you complete a pass, you're gonna check for any rocking back and forth on all four corners of the piece to make sure that it's dead flat. Once you've successfully flattened one face, then it's time to take that flat face, put it up against the fence of the jointer, and joint one edge. This way they are completely 90 degrees to each other. Once you complete that process, make sure you take a good true square and check and make sure they're 90 degrees to each other. Now at this stage of the process, if you were milling a, a tabletop or a, a cabinet door panel, you would pass these all through the thickness planer before joining them up. But since I'm making a cutting board, I'm going to be cutting them into strips on the table saw and then laying them on edge. And that's gonna make them all the same size anyway. So I'm gonna skip that step and save it for later. 
So by ripping these strips all to an inch and an eighth on the table saw, once I turn them on edge, they're all going to be two inches wide and an inch and an eighth thick. And that's going to be easy for me later on the glue up and easy on the hand planing and the thickness planer as well. Now this maple was roughed down to one and one eighth thick. So what I'm going to do is just rip this to two inches and then put it next to the cherry and it's going to be exactly the same thickness and the same width. So that's going to help in the layout. Now for the layout process. I want to lay all the boards out flat and then spread them out and make sure that I have a good pattern that I like and also the, the grain running in the right direction so that when there's a, the glue up is done, it, it looks seamless. And once I'm happy with the layout, grain direction, and the pattern, then what I'm going to do is draw a cabinet maker's triangle on it so that once I take the boards off and apply the glue or run them again through the jointer to make a better seam, I'm not going to lose the orientation of the pieces. Now for the glue up process. I already did a dry fit, make sure everything was exactly the way I liked it. I'm going to turn the boards on edge, apply the glue, and then clamp them together and remove the excess squeeze out with a wet rag. Now I want to make sure that I use a glue brush to spread the glue evenly across all the pieces so I get a really good glue joint with complete coverage. Now as I tighten the clamps for the glue up, I want to check evenness of all the boards on the top and bottom using my fingers. And if anything needs to be fixed, you could just loosen the clamp a little bit, realign, and then tighten it. Now I'll just use a damp rag to clean any squeeze out I can before I apply more clamps and don't have any room to do so. Removing the glue excess now, it will help you later on because it's going to be really hard on your tools once the glue cures. Now I'm going to use a hand plane to flatten one face of the cutting board, so what I'm going to do is sharpen my planes before I even get started, because this is maple and cherry, very hard woods, and nothing like a sharp plane blade to tear right through them. And now I'm just going to take a jointer plane, and I'm going to plane down one surface of the cutting board to make it nice and flat. This way it's ready to go through the thickness planer and make a co-planer on both sides. And after I plane it down, I'm going to be using the cast iron portion of my table saw because that is really dead flat, and I'll check it on there. And now I'll pass them through the thickness planer, and what I'll do is put that flat face that I hand planed down on the bed of the planer. Now I'll square up one edge of the miter saw. Then over at the table saw, I'll run that square edge to reference against my fence and square up the opposite end with the blade. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the milling process. hope you got something out of it that maybe you didn't know or maybe something that you're going to try in your milling process on rough lumber and making something like this or on your next furniture project. My next video is actually going to be really cool. It's going to be an upgrade to one of my tools. I have a 14-inch bandsaw. But the resaw capacity on that saw is only six inches. Now, uh, I, if I want to make a jewelry box or, or any kind of box or, or just resaw eight inch lumber or something like that and get more out of what I'm actually working on, then I'm going to have to be able to get more resaw capacity in the height. So what I'm going to do is install a riser block. And that's going to be really cool. So make sure you uh, subscribe, stick around, tune in for that. That's going to be real fun. We're going to have to take the whole top of the bandsaw off, put in the riser block, and then we're going to have to put new guards and readjust all the bearings and everything like that. It should be a lot of fun. Then we're going to test it out. And then, you know, projects after that, I'm going to be resawing, you know, two inch thick or, uh, you know, inch and a half thick uh, lumber to get the most out of it. And once I resaw that lumber, then now I'll have book match panels and things like that. So we got a lot coming up. So stick around. Make sure you subscribe. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Also on the bottom of the screen over here, there is a little picture of a, a bell. That's a notification bell. If you click on that, every time I upload a video, you'll get notified so you don't miss a thing. All right, guys. I hope you had fun in the shop today with me. I hope to see you next time. Make sure you subscribe. Have a good one.